The PR-1241-2, or PALK class corvette, is a new Russian coastal ship in Update 2.3, Hot Tracks. It tops off their coastal tree at Tier 5, coming in at a battle rating of 4.7. So, is it a powerful top ship for the tree, or does its precarious battle rating get it into some trouble? First, a bit of history on the class. The first PALK class corvette was laid down in 1976, entering service in 1980. Their patrol version of the Terran Tool class corvettes, being an extended version with a diesel engine. 29 were constructed, most of which served up until the 1990s. Some are still in service today in various navies. The Russian Coast Guard, Bulgarian Navy, Cuban Navy, Indian Navy, Ukrainian Navy, and Ukrainian Sea Guard. In War Thunder, the main gun of the PALK class is a 76mm AK-176M. It can fire up to 120 rounds per minute and has pretty good dispersion. It's a surprisingly powerful gun at longer ranges, but it has a low store of ammunition, only carrying 152 rounds. It gets two shell types, HE and HEVT. The HEVT shell is a direct upgrade, having more filler, a proximity fuse for aircraft, and a higher fragmentation modifier. It should be the only shell used for the cannon once unlocked, as it easily makes up for its price and additional damage output. For its secondary cannon, the PALK class has a 30mm AK-630 cannon mounted on the back. The AK-630 is incredibly powerful, having a fire rate of 5,000 rounds per minute. Don't be fooled by the number of tracers, only 1 in 6 shells has one. Its dispersion isn't great, but it can easily chew through nearby surface targets at close range. It's also the single best anti-air cannon in naval, giving the PALK class a surprisingly effective anti-air defense for its size. However, this cannon also has a low ammunition count of 2,000 shells, along with overheating quite quickly. Last comes the PALK class's secondary ordnance. 4 set 40 torpedoes, 10 RGB-12 rockets, and 12 depth charges. While there are 4 Strela missiles modeled on the back of the ship, they are not actually functional at the moment. The set 40 torpedoes aren't particularly interesting, having below average stats. They can be useful for trapping cruisers at close range, but they aren't particularly good. The RGB-12 rockets have more explosive mass than the shells of some battleships, but an incredibly low velocity and range. You need to be around within a kilometer of a target to actually have a chance at hitting them. They're worth bringing, dealing incredibly high damage to anything they hit and giving the PALK class a way to fight cruisers it commonly encounters depending on the map's terrain. The depth charges are, as usual, not really worth bringing at all. I would recommend bringing the set of 40 torpedoes and RGB-12 rockets, while leaving off the depth charges. The survivability of the PALK class is horrible, with only 36 crew and no armor. Any kind of autocannon or high caliber weaponry will quickly destroy it along with the ship being relatively vulnerable to strafing by aircraft. It relies on stealth to avoid being destroyed, rather than just tanking incoming fire. For mobility, it only has a top speed of 61 kilometers per hour. That's similar to most destroyers and cruisers, making it difficult to efficiently outmaneuver them. The PT boat spawn on the ship is its only real mobility advantage over blue water vessels, giving it a positional advantage at the beginning of a match. In playstyle, the PALK class is effectively a flanker and a close range class cannon. The weaponry is most powerful at close range and wastes less ammunition the closer it is to a target. It's best spawned early into a match, using its forward spawn to get into a covered position and ambushing other coastal ships or opposing destroyers with its overwhelming short range firepower. Take out the turrets of enemy ships using the high fire rate of the cannons, then saturate the hull with fire to take them down. The anti-submarine rockets can cripple cruisers at close range, and the torpedoes can be used to finish them off when set to a 4 meter depth. However, keep in mind that most destroyers and cruisers can one-shot the PALK class while also being able to survive its weaponry for a while, so even using proper tactics is still easy to be destroyed. So, is the PALK class worth getting? Well, it's all the way at the end of the Russian coastal tree, locked behind the very expensive PR-206 and PR-206M. The research cost is 380,000 RP, which is higher than the Imperia Chista Maria, along with having many more ships to go through to reach it. It also has a battle rating where it faces almost exclusively destroyers and cruisers, sometimes even facing 5.7 cruisers that's unable to efficiently kill outside of a miracle. It's probably better to pick up ships like the PR-206 and PR-159 if you're at the end of the coastal tree, as they're generally more effective and have a lower battle rating. So, as for the question of whether or not it's worth it, no, not really. It is simply too expensive for a vehicle that struggles to perform well and is subject to pretty bad up tiers. For modifications, I would recommend the following order. Toolset, Fire Protection, 76mm HEZS-62, Rudder Replacement, Propeller Replacement, 
death charges. This is only to unlock the rocket launcher. The death charges themselves are useless. Rocket launcher and engine maintenance. For crew skills, go for leadership, crew interchangeability, fire prevention, and ship control. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more naval content.